In this lesson, we're going to be learning about ramps and inclines. So for example, we have here a block of mass m on a ramp with an angle of theta as measured the horizontal. So we, we follow the steps here. Suppose we want to know the acceleration of the block along the ramp. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do one without friction first, and then we'll see how friction would affect the problem. So we begin, of course, as we begin all of them, with a force diagram. So I use a dot to represent my system. In this case, that's just my block. I start with the force of gravity, which, as we know, is always towards the center of the Earth, straight down. And it's touching the surface, so there's going to be a normal force perpendicular to the surface. And there is no friction in this case, so that's it. So step number two would be to write my basic equation, which is net force equals mass times acceleration. But in this case, there's one extra little thing that I want to do. I want to ask myself, what is the direction that it would accelerate? In this case, it's going to accelerate along the surface of the ramp parallel to the surface, and downhill in this case. So it's going to accelerate downhill. What I want to do is I want to arrange my coordinate system so that it lines up with the acceleration. Now, what that means is, instead of having a standard x is horizontal, y is vertical coordinate system, I'm going to rotate this so that the surface of the ramp becomes my x direction. See how that works? Surface of the ramp becomes my x direction. I'm rotating my axes. So on my diagram, I can illustrate that by doing this. That's my x direction. And that's my y direction. So as part of our force diagram, if we're on a ramp, we rotate our axes so that the direction of acceleration lines up with one of our axes. For ramps, we're usually talking about the x-axis. Always make the surface of the ramp your x-axis. Just because, you know, for example, if, if it were on a level surface, that would be the x-direction. So the fact that it's on a ramp, we're going to keep that surface being the x-direction. Okay. Then I'm going to write net force equals ma. So step one is the force diagram, including the rotating the axes so that it lines up with the acceleration. Then step two, the basic equation, net force equals ma. Step three... I look at the direction it accelerates. I'm going to identify the forces that make up this net force. Now, it's accelerating in the x direction, so I'm only looking at x direction forces. Notice that the y direction is perpendicular to the surface, and the normal force is completely in the y direction. So in the x direction, notice that there is a component of gravity that is in the x direction. I'm going to call that component Fgx, the x component of gravity. And that's will equal mass times acceleration in this case. So Fgx equals mass times acceleration. So now step four is I need to plug in numbers and solve. So how do I find Fgx? Well, let me take this diagram over here. And let, me, let me look just at the force of gravity. So here's the force of gravity, which of course is equal to m times g, right? Now it's got a component in the y direction that looks like this and a component in the x direction that looks like this. Where x and y meet, there's always a right angle. So this is fgx, and this is fgy, the x and y components of the force of gravity. Now, as I'm looking at this angle theta right here, this angle theta is going to appear in this triangle as one of these two corners. So I need to figure out which corner it is. Well, to do that, let me just take my, my, my axes here. I'm going to lay it on top. So here it is. The force of gravity is in the old y direction, the vertical direction. Now, when I rotated, right, when I rotated the x-axis through this angle theta, what happened to the y-axis? It also rotated through the angle theta. So the angle between force of gravity and fgy is going to be equal to the angle of the ramp as measured to the horizontal, the angle between the horizontal and the surface of the ramp. So that means up here in this corner is my angle theta. Once I recognize this, I can see that fgy is the adjacent side, and so that's going to equal hypotenuse times the cosine. And fgx, being the opposite side, opposite that theta, is going to equal the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So this is, this is good to remember because as long as you set up the ramp problem this way, it will always be this, this will always be the case. So the angle theta is the angle of the ramp measured from the surface of the ramp to the horizontal. Then the X and Y components of 
gravity will equal mg cosine theta for the y component and mg sine theta for the x component. And by x, we mean parallel to the ramp, and by y, we mean perpendicular to the ramp. So the parallel component of gravity is going to be mg sine theta. The perpendicular component will be mg cosine theta. And this will always be true as long as you make the surface of the ramp your x-axis. So when you rotate your axes, right, from horizontal, rotate it through the angle theta so that the x-axis is parallel to the surface of the ramp. And then you'll always have this case where fgx equals mg cosine theta, sorry, fgy, fgy, perpendicular component of gravity equals mg cosine theta, and fgx, or the parallel component of gravity, will equal mg times the sine of theta. So now if I take this and I plug this in for fgx, mg times sine of theta equals ma. Notice that the mass will cancel out, and I get the acceleration is equal to g sine theta. It's important to note that the mass did cancel out, and that's great. So in other words, the only the angle affects the acceleration and the acceleration of gravity, not the mass of the object itself. It's kind of like how if you drop two objects, the mass will cancel out. mg equals ma, and the mass cancels out. Just a similar thing here happens on the ramp. Okay, so let's go look at another similar example. What if the ramp is tilted the other way? Theta block mass m, right? Our force diagram, force of gravity, the normal force is this way now. And again, there's no friction. Again, I'm going to rotate my axes so that the x-axis is the surface of the ramp. So instead of going horizontal, the x-axis is going to go this way. So I've got my x-axis here, and my y-axis is going to be here. So when I do net force equals ma, again, I've got just the x component. It accelerates in the x direction, so parallel to the ramp. So I've got fgx equals ma. fgx, for the same reason, will equal mg sine theta. Mass will cancel out. G sine theta equals the acceleration. There it is. So it doesn't matter if the ramp is tilted to the right or tilted to the left. You're going to get the same mathematical result because you're always tilting your axis so that the x-axis is parallel to the surface. Okay? Always tilt it so x-axis is parallel to the surface. Okay? Now let's look at what happens when there is friction. So if there is friction... mu not equal to zero. Okay, and it's going to accelerate down the ramp again. So I start with my force diagram. I start with gravity. Always going to be straight down. My normal force will be perpendicular to my surface. And my friction is going to be parallel to my surface. Looks something like this. Then I'm going to rotate my axes, make the x-axis the surface of the ramp. Okay, like so. So the x-axis is parallel to the surface, which means friction is going to be all in the x-direction. And my y-axis is going to be perpendicular to the ramp, which means my normal force is completely in the y-direction. So now when I do my net force equals ma, and it is accelerating in the x-direction, I'm only looking at x-direction forces, it's going to accelerate downhill. So fgx is going to be bigger than friction. So I'm going to take fgx minus the friction equals ma. FGX I know is equal to mg sine theta. You can re-derive that every time, but you might as well just memorize it. FGX can be mg sine theta minus the friction. Now friction is mu times the normal. But the normal force, because it's accelerating in the x direction, there is no acceleration in the y direction, which means that up equals down in the y direction. So the normal force is going to be balanced by FGY. So mu times the normal is mu times fgy. And if we recall from before, fgy is equal to mg cosine theta. So I can replace normal force with mg cosine theta because that is fgy, and the normal force in this case is equal to fgy. So I replace friction with mu times mg cosine theta. That will equal ma. Now, I notice there is an m in every term. So I can divide out the m. So I just get g sine theta minus mu g cosine theta equals my acceleration. 
Now we can do this with numbers, but base, the basic principle is the same. So I just, if FGX, if I had if I had the M and the G and the theta, I could plug in those numbers and get a, a numerical value here, get a numerical value here, and solve for the acceleration, get a numerical value there. And with a problem like a ramp, you might end up with something, you know, how long does it take to slide two meters down the ramp? So you would do this to find the acceleration and then use that acceleration in a kinematics part of the problem. But that's essentially how you deal with ramp problems. The key is identify the direction that the object accelerates and then rotate your axes so that the, one of your axes lines up with the direction of acceleration. So typically for ramps, that means make the surface of the ramp your X axis. And when you make the surface of the ramp your x-axis, then gravity is going to have x and y components. And those components of gravity will be mg cosine theta for fgy, the perpendicular component of gravity, and mg sine theta or for the parallel component or fgx. Keep that in mind and ramp problems will be a piece of cake for you.